Welcome to another Measure Kool-Aid report, and this time we're talking about six-time Pro Bowler uh, Devontae Adams and his thoughts on Mr. C.D. Lamb, because he spoke pretty glowingly about Mr. C.D. Lamb, and, you know, obviously I'm going to give my input on it because, you know, I'm going to give you the Measure Kool-Aid on it, and it, to me, a lot of it is making sense, and then we're going to try to sum it up, so just kind of stay with me. So obviously, you know, uh, you know, it's been going around about what Devontae said about Mr. C.D. Lamb. Um, and he was on a podcast, I Am Athlete, where he talked about, uh, he was asked about his top five receivers. And that makes sense. Everybody want to go know what a top receiver think. And he listed number one himself. That makes sense. You go believe in yourself that you're the best. Then uh, Justin Jefferson, you cannot deny his production numbers. You got to make him number one and number two. Most would probably have been number one. Also, then people put Cheetah at number two B, which is weird to have a two B. Then three Stefan Diggs. I think Stefan Diggs deserved to be in the top three for sure. He's a very complete um, route runner, receiver, and I think one of the best route runners, top two, easily in the league. He threw a curveball with the Calvin Ridley because Calvin Ridley was, in my opinion, before he was suspended, was clearly headed to the number one receiver, not based on production, but based on his explosiveness out of his routes. As somebody who used to face receivers, is very few receivers that could put major fear in corners. I think Calvin really got there. Now, did he keep his legs from that suspension? We're going to see. But based on where he was when he was suspended, I'm not going to fight that. Mike Evans, I don't believe, is better than CD, CD Lamb right now. I think CD Lamb. I think Mike Evans is getting long in the tooth. I would disagree with that. I would say CD Lamb, even right now, is ahead of him. Uh, so as we kind of just kind of go through it, he said, I like CD Lamb a lot. He reminds me of myself. <laughs> I'm not bad at that, man. Uh, but that's a good comp. Like, and he was basically saying in relation to how he runs his routes. Now, what surprised some people is that Chase wasn't on his list. AJ Brown wasn't on his list. Uh, and then Cooper Cup wasn't on this list. If I go look at another article that talks about this, and I'm just give all these guys, you can go check, take a look at it, um, where they was talking about Devontae Adams. I like this article because it goes into a lot more detail. He said, I like CD Lamb a lot. If you watch the way CD plays, I think he's going to keep growing. He reminds me of myself. So that this article gives more context to where he said he's going to keep growing. Because if you watch Adam's career, he also progressed. Not he wasn't instant. He was somebody who went through the discipleship model. I call it a discipleship model to where you come under a form of number one and then you're discipled into becoming a number one. That's the same thing happened with Adams, and that's the exact track that Mr. C.D. Lamb is on. So this article gives you more insight of the context of what he was actually saying. And then the key part is he said, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep staying with on what you're on right now because this is going to get you that type of credit and respect that you deserve in moving forward. So, you know, a lot of people, they kind of focusing on the fact that he kind of left Cup out and, you know, that he left out other good people. But I understand this list and this list makes sense when you really look at it and in context and you look at it, in my opinion, with measure Kool-Aid. So when we measure the Kool-Aid, uh, I do agree. And I also will say this. I'm not too caught up on receiver rankings, to be honest. I'm not too caught up into that at all because honestly if i'm being all the way honest with everybody it don't make that big of a difference it don't make that big of a difference it's almost like if you one of these guys that's able to be forgive the metaphor if you're in a porn video you already pretty much are considered more than most 
So whether you crazy in your genetics to where you're just gifted or you barely made the cut, the bigger point is, is that you more than enough. Same thing with CD Lamb. I wouldn't care if he was ranked 15. His production is more than enough than what we actually need, to be honest. So if he was ranked 15, I wouldn't care. He's our number one, and he's also able to do a lot of damage as our number one. So I really honestly, and I'm just being frank with everybody, I don't care what his rank is. I'm just, just giving you my personal thought on it. I could care less. But if we're going to measure this Kool-Aid on the thought of what Adam said, I'm going to do it right. So this came out from my boy Outlaw on Twitter. He's a good follower. Y'all make sure y'all follow Outlaw Cowboy. Because he comes out with some very, 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 very good stats to me on occasion. And just, just a good follow, Outlaw. So this is one of the things that he broke down. That Mr. C.D. Lamb was second in broken tackles, third in explosive plays, fourth in EPA, fourth in TDs, fifth in yards after contact, fifth in first down receptions, sixth in receiving yards, and eighth in yak. See, and I'm gonna tell y'all something that's funny when I it's because it, the same thing is funny to me. It happens to Jack. It's crazy to me that when you look at actual production, usually the guys that people really act like don't deserve to be in a top five conversation, they usually have top five production. But it's when you have that star on your helmet, it just makes people judgment bad. I'm being all the way honest with you. But going back, this is the context and the measure Kool-Aid part of this as we break this down. Not that part, this part. I'm getting to that. Uh, it's the fact that C.D. Lamb did all of this, but he did this with very, very little help. And what do I mean? Well, this is another guy that actually does a pretty good job of stat breakdowns on occasion. Somebody that's a good follow. But this is one thing that he broke down on Connor Livesay. And this is what he said, and it goes into the context of why actually Adams is making a good case for C.D. Lamb. So he said Noah Brown finished the season with 2.3 yards of average separation. That ranks 117th out of 121st eligible wide receivers and tight ends. Michael Gallup is 2.4, which ranks 116th out of 121. So when you think about that, and this came from Next Gen Stats, his, his, uh, his stats. But he said not everyone is a separator, but they also ranked 103rd and 112th in catch percentage. And that's obviously, relatively speaking, meaning Noah, then Michael. So Noah was 103rd and Michael was 112th. And then we also know from last week where Michael Gallup came out and expressed that he is much better this year and was playing through pain in 2022. So basically Michael Gallup was sitting out there and was no real help to Mr. C.D. Lamb. And that makes a big difference to production. A big difference. Like, for instance, let's just keep it real. Mr. Amari Cooper, he got some help from C.D. Lamb. He did. Because, see, when you were number one with a number two, that's a real threat. It's harder to focus on you as the number one. But when your number two was a Michael Gallup that wasn't even 100% being a warrior fighting for his team, but just doing the best he can, that hurt the ability for CeeDee Lamb to get some help. Then you got Noel Brown as your number two. Come on, man. Let's just keep it real. That was just not enough. It's not at all close to what Mr. C.D. Lamb needed. So if anybody 
has the common sense to project that CD Lamb is getting ready to be better? He is. And he's going to be better for a lot of reasons. First of all, he could be better because now he actually has help. He has the help of guys that's going to be able to come in like Cook and take pressure off. It was games in which when CeeDee Lamb was playing with Amari Cooper, like go back and remember when the Dallas Cowboys smoked the Eagles. And they was basically trying to figure out who to concentrate on. So they first tried to concentrate on Amari, got cooked. It's like, ah, well, let's try to roll coverage over to the CeeDee Lamb. It's, you couldn't pick your poison, but you could pick your poison last year with Mr. C.D. Lamb. And that's why I called it receiver by committee part two. And they snuck it up on us. Because if you look at the same numbers, that 2.3 average separation of what Connor broke down. Remember, when they first acquired Amari, the receiver group was only averaging 2.2 yards of separation. And that was considered last in the entire NFL. So, when you now look at the fact that Mr. C.D. Lamb is getting ready to get more help from what's around him, even Tobert is likely going to take a step up uh, because the offense is getting ready to be simplified. You know, and it's going to be more concepts that's actually smart. Uh, Kelly Moore had a good offensive systems in terms of beating zone defenses. But if you threw a lot of looks at his offense, it confused the receivers. It confused Dak. It just did a lot of damage. But now it's going to be a simplified offense to where people like Tolbert is also going to be able to help Mr. C.D. Lamb. So I'm going to just tell y'all, it's period. C.D. Lamb is definitely trending the way you want somebody to trend because when i actually broke down mr cd lamb i actually said that i imagine cd lamb is gonna have a career similar to hopkins remember coming out of ou that's who he modeled his game after and he also wanted to wear number 10 because his favorite player was hopkins but when you look at him he's really clearly on track like if you really look at his production and look at what he's doing year three from being a formal disciple of Amari Cooper. He's on track, better than track. So remember, he missed five games with Dak, but he still had 1,359 yards, nine touchdowns. He was targeted 156 times and had 107 receptions. So he was treated in terms of his targets like a true number one a true number one and he did something about it even though he missed five games with a better quarterback with that so if you go compare his production to the first three years of deandre hopkins you'll clearly see that like i said he's on track clearly on track so remember it was in year three just like cd lamb to where hopkins became the number one because they moved on at that time from Andre Johnson, who then went to the Colts. But what they did different is that they actually targeted Hopkins way more. So look at this. We should give you a lot of hope in your future for Mr. C.D. Lamb. In 192 targets, he had only 111 receptions. So he was targeted way more than C.D. Lamb was in year three, but had right around the same receptions. So that's saying a lot. That's saying a lot about the upside of Mr. C.D. Lamb. Yes, he had about 150 more yards. You know, we go give Hopkins credit for that, but to me that has a lot to do with as many targets as he received as well so when i go look at mr cd lamb one of the also one of the most important things as we was looking at the degree of difficulty and we're measuring the kool-aid of what adam said 
This is one of the most important things to notice about Mr. C.D. Lamb. He finished the year way better than when he started the year. So look at his game one, 29 yards. Game two, 75 yards. Obviously, that's not with Dak, because at this time, that was with Cooper Rush, 87 yards, 97 yards. So basically, in his first six games, he was struggling. He was struggling to really get into 100-yard games. But it's one guy, in my opinion, that I really believe helped him greatly, low-key. I think it was T.Y. Hilton. I think T.Y. Hilton was one of the most underrated signings that we had in 2022 because it wasn't just the ability of T.Y. Hilton. It was the knowledge that he was able to pass on to C.D. Lamb because remember we was running a lot of option routes so you had to have a keen ability of reading the defense on the same level as your quarterback. So C.D., I mean T.Y. Hilton being a former number one and coming from an offense that used to use him with option routes, it made him uh, able to really explain the defense better to Mr. C.D. Lamb, and you saw the turn up, especially from the middle of the season on, where most defenses now should have a key of what you're doing, and they didn't stop it. So if you look at his last, if you look at game nine to game 17, man, that's a made, you see in a whole lot more 100 yard games out of Mr. C.D. Lamb, a whole lot more. So we see a game with 150 versus Green Bay where he ate them alive. Then you also saw him do that against the Giants. And then he had three games in a row to where he finished very strong with three games in a row of 100 yard games. So that's clearly saying that Mr. C.D. Lamb is trending better than what you expect. So is it wee woo of what Adam said? Is it? Is it? Oh, you see this guy? See this guy? Number one bullshit guy. He do the wee woo wee woo. Or was it true? Was it true? Well, again, it don't matter to me. <laughs> again. It, but yeah, it's true. CeeDee Lamb is headed in the right direction. He, because think about it. Let's just think about it. Going into last year, it was a lot of questions. Was he even a number one? By the end of the season, by Cowboy Nation, at least on that, it was no questions. It really became more of a debate, is he a real 88 or not? Because 88 is a high level than even just a number one. The, the uh, expectations of being an 88 is just extremely high. But I really do see that Mr. C.D. Lamb is not only made to be the number one because remember last year was his first year as that guy the guy that everybody was going to key on and by the end of the season he was used to it even in his production his production clearly showed it and so this is the best thing that i'm gonna finish this with is like Al Lau Cowboy said, he finished the year with this amount of production. But remember, he had no help. So you telling me with help, he not getting ready to be way better? Now, nah, Adams is right. He is clearly headed exactly like he was headed to where he started Devontae Adams as the number two behind White Lightning and became the number one and then shot up like a rocket. Same thing happened with DeAndre Hopkins. The same thing we getting ready to see with Mr. C.D. Lamb. Count it. So this is another Measure Kool-Aid report. I want to give my two cents on it. Give the big picture of what I see in Mr. C.D. Lamb and why I know we gonna be able to rest easy with him and why Devontae Adams is right that even right now, he is likely going to be a top five with ease, especially if Dak stay healthy. But this is another Major Kool-Aid report. Y'all stay up and we're going to continue to get out his phone. Peace.